Long before kings ruled and battles were fought, a migration changed everything. From the farms of ancient Iran to the heart of the Indian subcontinent. A story stretching back thousands of years. A tale of journeys, connections, and the subtle blending of lives that created the amazing diversity you see across India. It's a story written not just in history books, but in the silent language of DNA, the blueprint of life passed down through generations. And at the heart of this ancient narrative is a fascinating link with a land we now call Iran, a place historically known as Persia. Forget everything you thought you knew about borders and boundaries for a moment, because the echoes of the past reveal a deep shared heritage, a genetic conversation that has shaped the Indian people in ways you might never have guessed. This isn't just about historical interactions. It's about the very building blocks of Indian identity, and it's a story that's more captivating and human than any science fiction. Get ready to discover how the footsteps of people from the land of Persia left an indelible mark on the genetic tapestry of modern India. Picture this. Thousands upon thousands of years ago, long before recorded history as we know it, a monumental shift was happening. People were learning to farm, to cultivate the land, and this new way of life sparked incredible movements. From a region that includes modern-day Iran, ancient farmers began to journey. They weren't just carrying seeds and tools. They were carrying their genetic heritage, and they traveled towards the rising sun, towards the Indian subcontinent. This wasn't a small trickle. It was a significant migration that occurred during what we call the Neolithic period, roughly between 7000 and 3000 BCE. Think about that time frame. It's an almost unimaginable stretch of history. Evidence from ancient sites like the 9,000-year-old Mergar strongly suggests that the practice of agriculture in South Asia was deeply influenced by these arrivals from Iran. And it wasn't just ideas that traveled. The farmers themselves came, bringing their DNA with them. As these ancient Iranian farmers settled, they didn't remain separate. They met and mingled with the people already living in South Asia, the indigenous hunter-gatherers who had called this land home for even longer. This mixing was a pivotal moment, creating a new population that became a fundamental part of the incredible Indus Valley civilization. This blended group, with roots in both the local populations and these early Iranian farmers, became a kind of genetic bridge. Their descendants contributed significantly to the ancestry of two major ancient populations of India, the ancient North Indian and the ancestral South Indian groups. This means that a crucial part of the genetic foundation of many Indians today traces back to these ancient farmers from the Iranian plateau. Studies looking at the full picture of Indian DNA confirm this, showing that a large piece of the Indian genetic puzzle comes from West Eurasian ancestry, closely tied to those ancient hunter-gatherers and farmers from the Iranian plateau. The connection runs even deeper, going back further than the famous Persian empires you might have learned about in history class. Research points to a shared ancestry between the people of the Iranian plateau and the Indian subcontinent that existed even before the emergence of the Indo-Aryan civilization. Imagine a time when a common language was spoken in the vast pasture lands of Central Asia, a tongue shared by groups who would eventually move in different directions. The split between the groups who would become the Indo-Aryans and the Iranians is thought to have happened sometime between 2000 and 1600 BCE. Following this split, groups migrated southward, some heading into the Iranian highlands and others into the Indian subcontinent. The Iranian plateau wasn't just a stopping point. It was like a major highway for people moving across Eurasia, and it played a role in spreading various genetic markers, specifically types of mitochondrial DNA and Y-DNA into South Asia. Genetic clues also suggest population movements from southwestern Iran into India. These movements might even be connected to the spread of Dravidian languages in India. 
This incredibly deep and ancient genetic relationship is like the bedrock, the foundational layer of shared ancestry, upon which any later, more specific influences from the historical Persian empires were added. So when we talk about the impact of Persian DNA on modern India, it's vital to remember that this connection isn't just about recent history. It's rooted in genetic relationships that were forming thousands of years before the rise of famous Persian rulers. Now let's get a little more specific and look at the story told by Y-DNA, which is passed down from fathers to their sons. This gives us clues about paternal lineages and the journeys men took through history. Another significant Y-DNA lineage found in both regions is called Haplogroup L. It's thought to have originated near the towering Pamir Mountains and then traveled throughout the Indian subcontinent during the Neolithic period, becoming associated with the people of the Indus Valley civilization. While not as frequent in Iran, Haplogroup L is found at higher levels in specific areas like Balochistan, northern Afghanistan, and southern India. It's higher frequency among certain groups in India, particularly those identified with Dravidian languages compared to those linked to Indo-Aryan languages, hints at a possible connection to the people who built the Indus Valley civilization. Then there's Haplogroup R2, which is mostly found in South Asia, but also has a presence in Iran and nearby regions. This marker also tells a story of complex migration patterns. The fact that it's more common among Indo-Aryan speakers in South India than among Dravidian speakers suggests that these migrations had different impacts on different linguistic groups. The presence of these specific Y-DNA markers in both Iranian and Indian populations clearly points to shared ancestry and historical movements of people. The existence of J2 and L in South Asia, way back in the Neolithic period, shows those ancient connections with populations from the Iranian plateau, long before powerful Persian empires emerged. Later migrations, perhaps linked to the cultural and political influence of Persia, could have further contributed to where and how often we see these genetic markers today. The higher frequency of J2 among some Shia Muslims in India might indeed be a reflection of more recent genetic contributions from Persian-speaking regions, particularly given that Shia Islam is the main faith in Iran. Now, let's turn to the story told by mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA. This genetic information is passed down from mothers to their children, giving us insights into maternal lineages. mtDNA analysis also reveals shared ancestry between Iran and India. Haplogroup U is a major mtDNA marker that originated in West Eurasia and is commonly found in South Asia. It's also one of the most frequent mtDNA haplogroups among Iranians, appearing in about 20.73% of the population in one study. In India, haplogroup U is the second most prevalent, found in approximately 13% of Indians, with higher frequencies in North India. Its wide distribution across Europe, North Africa, India, Arab regions, and the Near East speaks to ancient maternal connections that spanned vast distances. Looking at specific sub-branches of haplogroup U, we find them in both Iran and India further suggesting a shared maternal heritage. Another mtDNA lineage found in both regions is called haplogroup W. It's common in areas like Eastern Europe, the North Caucasus, Central Asia, Iran, and Northwestern India. While it's quite prevalent in Northern Pakistan and Northwestern India, it's also present in Iranians at a frequency of around 3.5%. Some studies suggest that haplogroup W has been in India for a very long time, possibly as far back as 40,000 years ago. The distribution of W has been linked to the movements of people who spoke Indo-European languages, potentially indicating a shared history tied to these larger migration patterns. The presence of both haplogroup U and W in both Iranian and Indian populations strengthens the evidence for long-standing maternal connections between these regions. These links could date back to the very early movements of humans, 
or to subsequent periods of gene flow over thousands of years. Looking even more closely at the specific subbranches within these mtDNA haplogroups could give us an even clearer picture of when and how these maternal connections form. Moving beyond specific markers, genome-wide autosomal DNA studies give us a much broader view of the genetic relationships between Iranian and Indian populations. These studies look at the entire genetic picture and reveal significant shared genetic components and instances where different populations mixed. For example, research clearly shows that a substantial portion of the ancestry of modern Indians comes from those ancient Iranian farmers who migrated to the subcontinent between 4700 and 3000 BCE. This Iranian-linked ancestry is also found in the genetic makeup of the Indus Valley Civilization, highlighting a direct genetic line between these early agriculturalists and the people of that incredible ancient civilization. People from Sarazm, an ancient farming center in what is now Tajikistan, show a close genetic match to the Iranian-rooted ancestors of modern Indians, indicating a historical blending of these cultures. Indeed, the genetic contribution from Iranian farmers is considered a major and early factor in shaping the genetic landscape of South Asia, happening before the arrival of people from the steppe regions. West Eurasian ancestry, which is closely related to hunter-gatherers and farmers from the Iranian plateau, is a significant source of the genetic makeup of people in South Asia. In some parts of India, like Gujarat, this genetic component linked to Iran, the Caucasus, and the steppe can make up more than 35% of the total ancestry. Analysis of genetic mixing further supports these findings, showing the presence of genetic components related to Iran in various Indian populations. These comprehensive DNA studies emphasize a significant and ancient genetic connection between the Iranian plateau and the Indian subcontinent. This connection was primarily driven by the movement of those early farming populations. While these findings mostly highlight ancient links, they provide the essential context for understanding any more recent genetic contributions from Persia to modern India. The Parsi community in India provides a compelling real-life example of the genetic impact of a specific migration from Persia. Historical accounts tell the story of Zoroastrians who sought refuge on the western coast of India between the 7th and 10th centuries CE. They were fleeing persecution after the Arab conquest of Iran. Genetic studies on the Parsi population reveal that they are more genetically similar to each other compared to other Indian groups, which makes sense given their long history of marrying within their community. These studies also show evidence that they did mix genetically with the local Indian populations after they arrived, with estimates placing this mixing between 690 and 1390 CE. Interestingly, Y-DNA analysis suggests that the initial migration from Persia was mostly men, while the MT-DNA shows closer links to local Indian women. This indicates that the mixing that formed the Parsi gene pool involved more Persian men, and local Indian women. A study of ancient bones found at Sanjan, one of the earliest places where Parsis settled in India, revealed the presence of Persian genetic lineages. Modern Parsis have a genetic makeup that's a blend of Persian and Indian ancestry, with a particularly strong connection to the people of modern-day Gujarat. Some researchers even suggest that because the Parsis have maintained their cultural and religious ties with Iran for so long and haven't been intermarried extensively, they could be valuable for studying the genetics of ancient Persians. The genetic profile of the Parsi community is a clear testament to the direct impact of a specific migration from Persia on the genetic landscape of India. It resulted in a distinct community with a recognizable mix of Persian and Indian ancestry. Shia Muslim communities in India also have historical and cultural connections to Persia, especially through migrations that happened during the Mughal era and even earlier. Genetic research on these communities paints a complex picture. Studies on Shia Muslims in Uttar Pradesh show that they are primarily genetically related to their neighboring Hindu populations, indicating that a significant part of their ancestry is from the local Indian population. 
However, these studies also find a certain level of genetic contribution from Iran. Notably, the Y-DNA marker JP209 has been found to be more common among Shia Muslims in India, and a specific study found a higher frequency of Y-DNA haplogroup J2 in Shia Muslims compared to some upper caste Hindu groups. Furthermore, research on the Dawood Iboras, a specific group within Shia Islam with strong historical links to Iran, has shown a significant genetic contribution from West Asia, particularly Iran, in their populations in Tamil Nadu and Gujarat. This suggests that while most Indian, Shia Muslims, share a genetic background with local Indian populations, there is clear evidence of gene flow from Persian populations. This is particularly noticeable within certain subgroups and is reflected in specific genetic markers. This likely reflects historical migrations and cultural exchanges that have introduced and kept Persian genetic elements within these communities over time. In conclusion, the genetic impact of Persian populations on modern India is incredibly diverse and can be seen at different levels of genetic analysis. Those ancient migrations of Iranian farmers during the Neolithic period laid down a fundamental genetic layer that forms a significant part of the ancestry of most modern Indians. Additionally, evidence from Y-DNA and MT-DNA reveals ancient shared ancestry between the Iranian plateau and the Indian subcontinent that existed long before the historical Persian empires. The Parsi community serves as a distinct example of a more recent and direct genetic contribution from Persia. Genetic studies support their migration from Persia and their subsequent mixing with local Indian populations. Shia Muslim communities in India, while mostly sharing genetic ancestry with local Indian populations, also show evidence of some genetic contribution from Persian populations, likely a result of historical migrations and cultural connections. Tracing genetic ancestry is a complex undertaking because the genetic diversity of modern India is a result of countless migrations and mixing events over thousands of years. Pinpointing specific genetic markers as solely Persian influence can be tricky. Given the broader context of shared ancestry and movements of people across the region, more research, especially looking at ancient DNA from different periods and places, is essential for a more detailed understanding of these intricate genetic interactions. Nevertheless, the evidence clearly indicates that Persian populations have indeed contributed to the genetic landscape of modern India. This impact ranges from those ancient ancestral connections to more recent, specific migration events that have left a lasting genetic imprint on certain communities. While this genetic contribution from Persia is a notable aspect of India's incredibly rich and diverse genetic heritage, it's crucial to see it as just one thread within a vast and complex tapestry of ancestral influences that have shaped the populations of the Indian subcontinent. It's a story of connection, movement, and the beautiful blending of human history written in the very code of life that makes up the incredible people of India today.